we all like our apple cider vinegar in the morning. It gets us going. It's that, you know, kick that we really like, right? It doesn't make sense to have it at night. But there's a lot of compelling evidence that demonstrates that maybe we should be having it at night too, maybe not in lieu of. So let's talk about the benefits of apple cider vinegar being taken after dinner before bed. Because honestly, I might just make the full on switch. Let's take a look. There's one thing we really have to remember about apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is not doing anything like super miraculous. It's the acetic acid content that seems to be the most powerful player. Okay, well apple cider vinegar has a lot of acetic acid, so that's awesome. I tend to kind of forget about the whole like, uh, you know, probiotic effect. And I just, I, I want to focus on that acetic acid. So there's an interesting study because the first thing I want to focus on is the anti-glycemic effect. Okay, the blood sugar modulation effect. No one wants to go to bed with high blood sugar. It's not a good thing. So let's break down an interesting study. This study was published in the Annals of Nutrition and Metabolism. I like it because it looks directly at vinegar utilization. Okay, so this is fascinating stuff. It was a randomized crossover study. Okay, they took a look at four groups, one type two diabetic group and three healthy groups. Okay, so what it did is it gave them a, uh, had them go through a regular set of meals. Okay, then it had them do their dinner, like a standard dinner. Okay, followed by a 10 hour fast. Okay, and they measured their postprandial blood glucose, like what happened after they ate the food. Well, here's what's wild. Two teaspoons of vinegar ended up controlling that postprandial blood glucose by 20%. Okay, it modulated, it brought it down 20%. That is really fascinating. And what's also interesting is they found that when apple cider vinegar was consumed with the meal, it had a more powerful effect than if it was consumed before. And one could probably make the argument that it's probably more powerful than even if it was consumed after, because then you're actually getting that potential anti-glycemic effect. What's wild is the type two diabetic group also used an acetic acid capsule. Okay, and they did not get the same effect that the actual liquid vinegar gave. Okay, so consuming some apple cider vinegar along with your dinner prior to bed could be very powerful. Now let's touch on what's called the dawn phenomena for a second. If you're a type 2 diabetic, you probably know what this is. The dawn phenomena is uh, everyone experiences it, but type 2 diabetics to a different magnitude. When we wake up in the morning or prior to waking up around like 3, 4 a.m., our liver dumps a bunch of carbohydrates. So we end up having this high level of fasting glucose or higher than normal. It's a kind of a phenomenon, but what it is, is the liver going through gluconeogenesis and dumping some carbohydrates. Well, we don't want to wake up with high blood sugar. Okay, that's not a very good thing. So here's another study, which is fascinating. This study was published in the journal Diabetes Care, and it found that potentially utilizing some acetic acid, from apple cider vinegar, could attenuate that morning rise in glucose. It was a three-day randomized crossover study okay, with 11 type 2 diabetics. And they gave them either water or apple cider vinegar before bed. The water group actually still had a 2% drop in their blood glucose in the morning. But the apple cider vinegar group had a 4% drop. Now, that doesn't sound like much, 4%, but it's double control. So statistically, that's huge. Okay, that's double. So adding apple cider vinegar before bed improved their fasting glucose by double. So that is really a powerful testament to, wow, I want to take apple cider vinegar before bed. Anyhow, I'm not a doctor. I'm some guy on the internet, but whatever. Let's go ahead and break down another study. This time we're getting into more of the digestive enzyme piece. And quickly, before I jump into that, today's video sponsor is Thrive Market. So whether it's apple cider vinegar or other pantry staples that you want to get, I do recommend you check them out. They're a huge supporter, obviously make this content possible, but it's an online membership-based grocery store. So it allows you to go online and then filter the kinds of things you want. You want paleo? No problem. You want vegan? No problem. You want liquids? You want baking? Whatever. No problem. You check the boxes and it's like having your own perfect grocery aisle just for you. It is so awesome. And if you use the link down below, you can save 25% off your first order plus get a free gift. But you got to use that link that's down below in the description. So a big thank you to Thrive Market for making this all possible. And thank you to you for supporting the sponsors that support us. All right, the next piece is about digestive enzymes. So this is kind of wild. So there's a study that was published in the International Journal of Pharmacology. Now, the study was done in rats, but it still matters, okay? They found after giving rats four weeks of apple cider vinegar, they had a decrease in the digestive components of maltase, sucrase, and lactase. Well, you may be thinking, why would I want to consume something that's decreasing my digestive load, my digestive enzymes? That doesn't sound good. Well, what happens is by decreasing these, we are decreasing 
the sort of hydrolysis of what's called a disaccharide to a monosaccharide. That sounds like Greek, Thomas. What are you talking about? Basically, by decreasing these enzymes, by decreasing these digestive pieces, we decrease the amount of carbohydrates that break down into simple sugars. When we decrease the amount of carbohydrates that break down into simple sugars, that's less simple sugars that we absorb, potentially meaning that apple cider vinegar could allow us to get away with consuming more carbs without a huge spike, but also just maybe it's going to improve and make it a little bit better so we still maintain our insulin sensitivity. It's a pretty good thing if you ask me. Now let's move into something called a free fatty acid receptor and why this could be beneficial at night. So if you struggle with getting hungry after dinner or getting hungry in the middle of the night, this is a very powerful piece. There's a study that was published in the journal Diabetes that found that acetic acid combined to what is called free fatty acid receptors 2 and 3. What does that mean? Well, if you look at the study, you find that this study's done in mice, but we can still translate it over. In mice, apple cider vinegar or acetic acid in this case bound to FFAR2, free fatty acid receptor 2 in colonic cells. Okay, what that means is it triggered a potential release of glucagon-like peptide 1 and peptide YY. Thomas, you're driving me crazy. You sound so like foreign with this stuff. Glucagon-like peptide 1 slows down gastric emptying. Okay, so that means that food that is in your gut stays in there a little longer, keeping you satiated, keeps you full. Okay, but food that also digests a little bit slower also triggers less of a blood sugar spike. Less of a blood sugar spike means less of a blood sugar drop, which means if you end up hungry right before bed and you want to just munch on things, apple cider vinegar after your meal or prior to or you know with your dinner could be very powerful based upon how it binds to this free fatty acid receptor. So from a satiety standpoint, it's huge. I'm a big evening eater, nighttime eater. I get so hungry, I have to draw a hard line in the sand at like 7 p.m. and just don't consume anything after that. Apple cider vinegar has been helping me with that significantly. This next one is huge when it comes to fat loss because AMPK is what we're talking about here. Apple cider vinegar, or in this case, acetic acid, which we really got to be careful with our science here. Acetic acid, which is a constituent of apple cider vinegar, acetic acid drives up AMPK. AMPK is an energy sensor within our body. So when we go a period of time without food or when we go and we exercise, it's bringing up AMPK. AMPK signals the body to release fats and to also release carbohydrates because it says, uh-oh, there's no food coming in or, uh-oh, this person's working really hard, so we need to go ahead and liberate fuels, whether it's fat or carbs. We liberate fuels because the energy sensor is determining that we are low on fuel. Well, the Biochemistry and Biophysical Research Communications Journal dove into this a little bit more. It's really wild. In this case, there was an in vitro arm, meaning like a petri dish study, and an in vivo arm. Okay, so they looked at both, but we're going to focus on the in vitro piece. They looked at rat hepatocytes, which are rat liver cells, okay, and they treated these rat liver cells with acetic acid. Well, what ended up happening was pretty wild. Within just an hour of treating rat liver cells, they found that there was a 40% increase in the phosphorylation of AMPK. Ultimately, a 40% increase in AMPK. A 40% bump up in that energy sensor saying, ah, start releasing fats, start releasing carbs. That is epic. Now, this is done through a couple different potential pathways. One pathway, better glucose utilization in the periphery. Okay, there are some studies that demonstrate that through a nitric oxide pathway, uh, cells in our periphery tissues through GLUT4 mobilization can actually use glucose better. So basically, the cells around our body are sucking up glucose more which means that the energy sensor is sensing that there's less glucose because it's actually going into the cells where it should. So then the liver says, uh-oh, there's no glucose in the blood. We need to start liberating things. That's a good thing. Secondly, it may inhibit hepatic glucogenic gene expression, which means at the liver level, we are creating less or expressing less of the genes that allow for more gluconeogenesis. So we could have a modulation of gluconeogenesis occurring there, which means the liver is releasing less carbohydrates. Probably the most powerful one when it comes down to fat loss is from a study that was published in the journal Cellular Physiology and Biochemistry. This showed that acetic acid, through some indirect pathways, activated PPAR-alpha. Okay, PPAR-alpha is the master switch that you flip for your body to utilize fats better. So at a like receptor protein level, the nuclear level of a cell, when you flip this PPAR switch, your cells use fat better. It improves uh, carnitine palmitoyl transferase, it improves CD36, it improves just beta oxidation and how a cell uses fat that much better. So what does that mean for taking it at night? 
Well, it means that if it's driving up AMPK, you're getting into a fasted state faster. So if after your meal, you know, normally for your body to register as you being in, say, a deficit, maybe it takes 12 hours. Potentially, apple cider vinegar might make that eight. Maybe it makes it six. Well, some studies like this one that I mentioned show that it was a 40% increase in AMPK phosphorylation. So 40% faster, potentially. It's very, very interesting. So the bottom line is apple cider vinegar at night might even be better than taking it in the morning. But that doesn't mean you have to pick one or the other. It's such an inexpensive product. We're talking a couple of bucks. We're talking a couple of cents each time you utilize it. So personally, I'll use it at both. I mean, you just one of the tips I want to provide is try sipping it with a straw so you're not breaking down the enamel in your teeth. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.